everyone it's Kathy Champion and you're back here in my craft room and on my YouTube channel random Kathy's random acts of stampin welcome in and uh, I hope everyone's ready to make a beautiful card because we're gonna be working with this set right here and it is called let's go fishing or uh, gone fishing which is the stamp and the dies the paper is called uh, let's go fishing which is the name of the the set there's also that comes if you order the entire collection which you'd still get the bundle price for the stamps and the dies um, you will also get the paper and the twisted rope embossing folder now these items if you have a catalog can be found on page 78 and 79 in your annual catalog so I'm gonna and that's this catalog here I'm gonna move everything out of the way because I want to show you the actual product here is our stamp set and it is called gone fishing you have some beautiful little lures and uh, some little uh, stamp that will do water and it's a two-step stamp set which is great because you can add color into your pieces very easily without having to color and they're photopolymer so it makes it real easy to add the color and you can see that I have I played with this a little bit and uh, actually made a card for my um, daughter to give to her um, husband and the the uh, father of her children so I'm hoping he's gonna enjoy that he enjoys fishing quite a bit so anyway here is the twisted rope embossing folder and it is a beautiful um, and it's just that it looks like twisted rope and it will add so much uh, emphasis onto your uh, cardstock if you use this now I'm not choosing to use this today but we will use that another time I can promise uh, here are our dies and I, these dies are just absolutely precious because you can make a tackle box you have this beautiful or uh, very large rounded corner that you can cut or you can use this for the tray and we're going to be using this piece today and I'm going to stamp down some uh, images and then we're going to run all this through the uh, the machine but what I want to do is choose out my pieces that I want to stamp and for that I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock so I have a piece of the thick uh, basic white and we are going to cut the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this piece but before I do any cutting, I'm going to lay that there because I know this is where I want to cut this. I'm going to do some stamping. I also got a piece of pecan pie. We're going to cut this out of pecan pie as well so that we will have it to look like a, a tackle box. But I want to reinforce it with the white because it needs to be thick. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to stamp all of my pieces. And I'm going to use a very basic color. I am going to use... Um, gray and I'm going to stamp down some of my little fishies and some of my little tackles and lure, leers and whatever you call these things but we're going to do some uh, quite a few this is the piece that goes over that so we're going to save that one we're going to do this one I may do more than one of these because I want I would rather have more than not enough so these are our second pieces right here so I'm going to take those ones out and we're going to go ahead and start stamping and I'm going to like I said I'm going to use a smoky slate for my ink color and that's just our regular uh, stamping pad and I'm going to sit this right here and let's get some blocks so we can load up our pieces and now we're just going to go ahead and, and stamp these so I'm going to do two of these And you notice I put enough of space between them that I can uh, put a die around them and cut them. So we're going to stamp that one there. And another one here. And then I'm going to stamp maybe two or three of these. I like this one. There's one. Two. Three. And let's get a couple of our bobbers. That's one, two, we can always, if we don't use them on this card, we can always use them on another card. So I'm, I'm done with the gray, so now we need some colors. 
and I'm going to pick out some bright, um, I, you know what, I'm going to leave these sitting over here so I remember what color inks I use. I'm going to grab a, Parakeet Party, that's a nice bright color. Let's do a afternoon, Azure Afternoon, and let's do a Blueberry Bushel. No, I want something a little bit brighter. Let's do a Moody Mauve. That gives us three nice colors that we can stamp with. So I'm going to start out with this Moody Mauve, and I'm going to load this up on a block and that one needs to go in that direction so these this one will go on on here so I want to do these three different colors so I'm going to do one I'm gonna move this out of my way so I can stamp and I want to get right over it so that I can color that just that color like that and I'm going to grab my Stampin' Scrub. I love my Stampin' Scrub. Um, it does me cleaning. It's got little fuzzies on it right now, but I'm going to brush those off. And what I'm going to do, I have cleaner already sprayed on here, but I'm going to spray just a tiny bit more. I do need to clean this, and these pads come out. You can see they're, they're locked in right here, but you can take um, just a butter knife and go up under the edge of it and pop those right out. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of Stampin' Mist right here. And now I'm ready to clean this stamp. And we can close this one. And now I'm ready to go ahead and grab my next one, which is going to be this one. I'm going to lay that stamp over to the side and pick this one up. And for this one, I'm going to go into the blue. And I'm very lightly pick, picking up that color. And I'm going to stamp here. And we need to grab this one again. Let's see if i got some more stamp blocks. I have Bukuza stamp blocks because when I do videos like this, I want to be able to grab as many of these pieces as I can and be able to get them stamped down. So there's a blue one. Beautiful. And let's clean this one. And now we can put this blue away. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that blue. Now we're going to go with the Parakeet Party. And we're going to load it up in the green and stamp it right about there. Beautiful. Now the other one that we need to do is our little fish head. And this one we're going to load up. See, that's going to go right there. And that's going to be so cute because, let's see if I can get a block that that will fit on. Oh, that'll work. I don't know. I need one a little bit bigger than that. So we're done with this one, so I'm going to take this one off and pick up this one. And we're going to do one that's green. Beautiful. And I think I want one that is blue. So let's bring out the Azure Afternoon again. Clean. Ink and stamp just like that now we need to do this one in a different color so let's make sure that's clean and this one's clean and i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these so just so i'll know that everything is clean and ready to to go back into its packaging I'm a stickler for cleaning my stamps, and I think if you've watched my channel for any time, you'll already know that about me. So I'm going to just pick those up. I'm going to take the bobber off, and we're going to load up the red bobber. And I'm going to do this in red because I think it's beautiful. 
nothing says you couldn't have a blue bobber, but I'm going to do it in red because I love the red bobber. They're very traditional looking. So I'm going to go with the real red. And we're going to ink that up. And I'm going to come right down to the bottom and I'm going to try to get that layered just like that. Beautiful. And you can see what putting that color on does for your uh, pieces. It really does make a difference. And it's so easy. And that's what I love about anything that's a two-step stamp, I'm all in. I'm going to make this one red as well. So that's our little piece like this. And I am going to ink that up in the red. And we're going to come over and stamp it right here, just like that. Let me clean this off. I love cleaning my stamps on these because for one thing it cleans really good. For the other thing is I can constantly use this over and over and I have a I have a wet side and a dry side and I love that. Please don't look at my fingernails. They need doing really bad, but I decided to do the video first because I needed to get some things done today before I actually do my nails. Y'all know how that is. If you've got to do any scrubbing around your house or whatever, you don't want to do it right after you do your nails. <laughs> so, all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to die cut every, all of my pieces out. And I also am going to do some pieces in silver, like our hooks. I want to do a couple of those in silver. I want to do uh, some of my little weights are going to be done in silver and maybe even one of these little weights in silver. So those are gonna be done in silver and I'm gonna use my, my dies to cut out everything, but I gotta trim everything down so it will fit in my machine. And then when we come back, we're gonna go ahead and put all this uh, together and I'll show you exactly how it all looks. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got everything cut out and you can see here's all of our little lures and hooks and weights and what have you, bobbers, that we need for our tackle box. So I'm going to push all of these over to the side, maybe up here in the corner of my, my glass mat. And now we're ready to bring out some cardstock and some DSP. Now like I told you, the DSP is so pretty because it is everything that any fisherman would love. You've got the plaid on the back. You've got these beautiful little lures, some fish. I mean, it is just absolutely the cutest paper ever. And I think for this one, I'm going to choose this piece of gingham. And it's the same as that one. I'm going to grab this piece because it's got that gingham on the back. And I want, to, I want that for the front of my tackle box. Now the inside of my tackle box, I am going to go with the pecan pie. And the reason for that is I want the, the tackle box on the inside to look like a tackle box would on the outside. And I think these colors play really well together. This is the pecan pie. And then this is our designer series paper. And like I said, we're going to cut this down to be the top of our uh, card. So that's going to actually be a mat. So I'm going to set that over to the side for just a moment. I am going to need to cut a couple more of my actually inside of my for the inside of my tackle box because you know how most tackle boxes raise up and you have a tray the two trays inside i want to try to mimic that as best i can i've seen a couple of different videos where they did this i thought it was absolutely cute but i'm kind of doing it my way so i'm not really going by theirs i did look at pictures um the first thing i want to do is go ahead and cut down a card base so let's do that before we go any further, and I'm going to bring out my paper trimmer. I'm going to put this in on the 11 inch side across the top, and I'm going to bring it over to five and a half. And then all I'm going to do is just slice that piece of cardstock in half. Oops, there's one of my little, one of my little tackle pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to take this piece, I am going to bring up my scoreboard, and this is our Simply Scored scoring tool. 
and I'm going to lay this up here on the eight and a half inch side and I'm going to score it at four and one fourth. So right here, I'll make sure everything's up in that corner and I'm going to give that a really good score. Now, if you ever have trouble with your, um, your stylus tool jumping your track, try holding it down as close to the paper when you pull down like that rather than like this. When you have it up straight like this and kind of come down, you have more of a chance of it jumping that track and causing you a little bit of trouble. Now, I turned mine over because I want to fold into that mountain. If you feel you have a... Uh, an indentation on one side and a raised up on the other side. Always fold into that raised up side. And I'm just going to fold it like that. And I am going to go ahead and put my Simply Scored scoring tool down. I'm going to bring out my bone folder and I'm going to score this a little more because I want this to lay down. And once you get everything in this card, it is going to be hard to get it to lay. Just so I'm going to also cut another piece of this, and this time I want to do it using my die. So I'm going to show you how I go about doing this. We're going to take that tray one more time, just the tray itself, not the, not the outer edge, but the tray, which is this piece. And we're going to run this through our die cut machine. Again, I'm going to go offline to do this because, <clears throat> sorry about that, y'all. Because I want a piece that is going to go inside. I'm going to cut two of these. I think I can get two if I go this direction. Yeah. So I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. I'm going to have to cut this in half and run it through. But I'm going to do that and then I'll come back. I already have two like this. And this is two of our white ones. And what I want to do is have two white and two brown. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I come back. Because we're going to build these up to give these a little bit more, um, ind I guess, um, not indentation, but, um, hmm. Let me think on that just for a sec. So we can have... Uh, dimension that's the right word okay let me do that before we go let's go ahead and cut our other piece of designer series paper um, and that's going to be this piece so i'm going to put this in and we're going to line it up at four inches and we're going to give that a slice and we're going to turn it the other direction and put it to five and a quarter and we're going to give that a slice. Now this is going to be our front on our card. Now if you want to, you can easily come back and put a piece of the pecan pie behind it, which I may do that because I think it will be very attractive. So let's try that. Let's do four and one eighth. I'm going to do four and one eighth by five and three fourths, so five, not three fourths, I'm sorry, three eighths, so it's gonna be one, two, three. So I like to count them because that way I don't get messed up with what I'm doing. So now this will layer on here with just a hint of that pecan pie behind it, and then we can put all of it on here with just a hint of that pecan pie peeking out, which I think is going to give the card a lot of stability and a lot of emphasis with what we're planning on doing with this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and, and die cut my pieces that I need. I need two more white ones and I need two brown ones. So that will give me a, um, actually I need one Okay, I only need one of the brown ones like this, and then I need a half a tray of white and brown. So I'm gonna go cut these, and you'll better be you'll better be able to see what I'm talking about once I get back. So I'll be right back, and after we get these pieces cut, we can go ahead and get this uh, card together, and you're gonna see just how beautiful it is. I'll be right back. 
Okay, everyone, I am back, and as you can see, I have three of my full trays um, cut. <clears throat> I did two of these in white. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, I did two in white and one in the pecan pie, because this isn't going to sh um, show. We're going to hide the white ones um, underneath the pecan pie. You may see a tiny bit of it peeking out, but I'm going to do my best to get those glued directly over top so that we don't see that and what it's going to do it's going to build the tray up to give it more dimension <clears throat> I'm so sorry <coughs> I took a sip of drink just before <laughs> just before I um, uh, came um, back on with this and it did not go down the right way so I do apologize I also cut half of the tray so what I did is I laid my die and let me show you I want you to see exactly what I did I laid the half of my die like this over top of my cardstock and ran that through and what that left me was was with these now all of my little pieces came out and they're laying over to the side and we will use them and I'm gonna show you how in a minute but what we want to do with these pieces, and I did cut two of the pecan pie in this one and one white. It just happened to be the way I had my paper, um, my leftover pieces that would fit. So it, it worked fine. You could do them all out of um, pecan pie if you wanted to, or you could do them all out of white. I wanted the tray itself to look like the pecan pie to match the rest of the tackle box. So that was the reason for me doing my pieces like this. So what we're going to do is we are going to measure this piece is going to be 5 inches by 3 and 3 quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut a tray for the bottom of this that's going to match that size, but we'll do that in a minute. I'm also going to measure this one, and we're going to actually make a tray for this, and we know it's going to be five, and this one is going to be one and a half. So five by one and a half, and five by three and three-fourths. What we want to do before we go any further is I want to trim off these little... Um, the little ditties that's hanging right there, the little pieces that cut that wasn't supposed to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here and just snip, 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 and snip. So that's going to be what those look like once you get them snipped, and we're going to do the same thing. And you might you might say, well, why not stack them all together and do them in one shot? Um, I'm just afraid that my cardstock will shift and I'll end up cutting what I don't want to cut. So for me, I just as soon take the time to do them individually. But, you know, you do you. I, I never, ever want to tell somebody um, that they can't do a, a, a card a certain way. Um... You know, do it your way. Now that one I did cut a little bit longer, but that's okay. I'm going to come in right about here and cut this. And I'm going to stay right on that line and snip that all the way down. Now these are going to stack very nicely. And I'm going to leave that little tab right there that looks like where you can pull that tray up and down. I think that will give it a little bit of dimension as well. Let's clean up my little snippies off of the, um, the, my desk. <laughs> my, I'm, th I'm thinking ahead and trying to talk at the same time, and you know that doesn't always work. Now this one, I'm just going to snip the back ones. I'm going to leave the front one, because these are going to fit flush to the back of your card. So we don't need these either, so we're just going to snip them straight across like that like that and I'm going to go ahead and do the other two as well
Okay, now that we've got those all snipped out, we also need to cut those solid pieces that's going to go underneath um, because that's what we're going to build this up on top of. But I like to build these first and get them nice and adhered together and then we can do our bottom tray with no problem whatsoever. Uh, we need that bottom tray in order to hold everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this other piece of pecan pie and I know that this piece needs to be five inches by three and three quarters. So I'm going to do three and three quarters. And another one that's three and three quarters. And then we can cut both of these down to five inches. And I went just a little bit past the five inch mark because I want to make sure that we have, now this one we can actually cut in half at two and a half. So let's see, this one is three and three fourths. So let's look at this, I think one and a half. Yeah, we can cut this one at one and a half. Just a little bit, uh, just a hair bigger than um, one and a half. And a hair bigger than one and a half. I think it's about time for me to change my blade. I'm starting to get little fuzzies on my paper and that's an indication that your blade needs to be changed out. So what I want to do is I want to stack these up first and I am going to bring in my silicone craft sheet for these because we're going to make a little bit of a sticky mess. So and I've got glue all over this one. I see it. I need to take it to the sink and clean it and I just haven't done that yet. So we're just going to we're going to power through on this. How's that sound? So I'm going to take and sandwich this one in between the two um, brown ones. And I think that will help camouflage the white somewhat like that. So I'm going to put some glue on this piece first. And I'm just going to use regular liquid glue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a line of glue. And see what I mean? If you get it off, it's not going to matter if you got it on the silicone craft sheet because it won't stick to that. So now I'm going to take the white one and I'm going to lay it on top. And I'm going to stand that up and kind of tap it to make sure that I'm getting everything nice and even. That looks really good. Now I'm going to go back and put more glue on top of the white one the same way. Just run a nice line of glue all the way around. Something like that. And then I'm going to lay this one down on top of it. And again, I'm going to pick it up and make sure that I can even everything up as best I can and give that a good press just like that. And now you can see some of the wet glue on it, but when that dries, you will not see any of that wet glue. It will disappear. While we have this out, let's go ahead and adhere this piece to our piece of solid cardstock. And to do that, I'm going to turn this over. And again, I'm going to run the glue on that underside. Just like that. And I'm going to set this piece of cardstock just over top of it. Something like this. And then I'm going to wipe off any excess glue. I want this to dry nice and clear. I'm going to lay that. Let's grab another silicone craft sheet. That's why it's good to have more than one of these because you just never know 
when you're going to need more than one. And I know I've got another one in here. Here we go. So I'm going to lay that there to dry while we work on our next piece. So our next piece is going to be the larger one. So I'm going to take this piece and lay it to the side. And on this one, I need to stack from the white up to the brown. So, and again, like I said, you could very easily cut these all out of your pecan pie and you wouldn't have to worry about trying to hide it. I didn't think about that when I was doing this. I probably would have went in that route, but it's okay. You can do it either way. And I like the fact that this was a really thick um, piece of the basic uh, white, the basic white thick. So I'm going to lay that down on there and give it a tap, 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 pick it up, make sure everything's squared up, looks good. Now I'm going to run glue around it one more time. Up the side and down through here, press that. I think we got that covered pretty well. And then we're going to bring this piece on. And this is going to be the piece we want to camouflage as best we can. So for this piece, I really want to try to get that on there as nice and even. And I'm going to pick it all up. And I'm going to try to squeeze and make sure those pieces are camouflaged behind that white behind the pecan pie. Now that I have that done... I'm going to move this piece over and I'm going to grab this one because this one is really messed up. And we are going to um, add our glue on the back of this one again. And I'm just going to go around the edges, down through here, and around. And down through there. Now we're ready to sit this piece down on top of our tray. And again, this is going to give our our tray a bottom. And look how nice that looks. And you can come back and round those corners, and we'll do that once the glue all dries. I'm going to lay these both over here for right now. And we're going to work on our mechanism that's actually going to allow everything to glue together. And, uh, or everything to go together in our card is what I meant to say. So let me clean off my tip. And I have got so much sticky on my fingers. You know what I need to do? You got it. I need to grab one of my alcohol wipes and get this excess glue off of my fingers. And these work so well to get the glue off. And uh, they're so easy to make and such a um, asset in your craft room. Like I said, I use them quite often probably while my hands are dry, but I do lotion my hands quite a bit and make sure I have good lotion at night. So, okay, we are ready now. Let's go ahead and assemble our card, what we have thus far. So the first thing I want to do is put down, that fish is pretty too, but we're going to go with this piece because this is what we decided. And I'm going to put that down just like that. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab some Stampin' Seal. And I'm going to just lay out some Stampin' Seal all the way around my edges. And this stuff is really super strong. So if you see what I'm doing, I'm just doing little, little tidbits of it here and there. It doesn't take a lot because it is so strong. And I'm going to put one piece in the middle. And now I'm going to bring this to my pecan pie. And glue it down about like. Mm. No, no, no. Not quite. We need to come over just a hair more this way. That looks good. Very good. I'm going to just give that a good press. And now that is adhered on there. Then we'll turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing again on the back of this.
and this is your typical A2S card, so it's not a bigger card or anything. This all works with our regular standard size cards, which I think is fabulous. So again, we're getting that little tiny border. Oops, again, that did not work. So just lift it up. If you lift with your stamp and seal before you press it, you can get it back up. Once you press it, it locks it in place and you are pretty much set with it there. All right, that looks really good. I love that. Love it. Are you loving it? So now what I wanna do, I don't think I'm gonna need this piece after all. We may end up putting a piece of designer series paper under there because these are going to fit in here like this and the bottom one is going to go in first and I have these little mechanisms now I cut these one and a half by two inches and we're going to score them on the two inch side so I'm going to bring in my scoreboard to do this so here is our simply scored scoring tool and I'm going to put I'm picking up hooks and all kinds of good stuff over here I'm going to put one of these up here in the corner and we are going to score it at one, I mean, I'm sorry, a half, uh, one inch, and one and a half. That's simple. That's all we need to do. And this is going to go together just like this and form a little square like that, just a little cylinder. And you don't need to do it but just in that one, and you know, it doesn't have to lap over, so it only needs to be that two inches and scored at every half an inch. So a half an inch, one inch, one and a half. All right, I'm gonna go through these really quick and do those. So a half, one, one and a half, and a half, one, one and a half, and again at a half, one, one and a half. And I think we're done with those. If we need another one, we'll just cut it and take care of it. But I think that will work. All right. So now we're going to open up our card. And what I want to do is I want to put my bottom tray in first. And in order to do this, what we need to do is adhere these so that this piece is all the way to the back, just like that. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use regular liquid glue on these. And all I'm going to do on the back of one of these, I'm going to lay out some glue. And I'm going to fold it in half. Because what I want to do is I want to lay it so that the top of your card is here and your bottom is right here and we're going to bring it all the way over about a quarter of an inch from the side and you want to lay it in just to that score line give it a press and what i like to do is press it like that so that now it gives you it here's your piece down so what we're going to do again is i'm going to actually take some tear and tape for this one and i'm going to put I wish I used tear and tape on the other, but that's okay. We got this. I'm going to grab my little block that lets me cut my tear and tape nice and even. And put another piece down right there. And we'll do tear and tape on all of the, the other one. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. I hope y'all enjoyed the video earlier in the week where I showed you all of the wonderful things that our Take Your Pick tool can do and the new accessories for it. I thought it was just ingenious to have those extra tools to work with your Take Your Pick tool. So um, I'm going to lift this up. Like so. And now what I want to do is I want to close that top of that card over on it. And then when it raises up, you're going to have a 
you're going to have a piece in here like this. This is going to be the support that's going to hold your bottom tray in. So this is going to sit right like that, and it's going, when it goes shut, your, your piece will come down like so. But let's get them both in, and then I'll show you exactly how this is going to work. So let's take another one, bend it in half. We're going to put scoring tape this time. I'm not going to do the glue. I think I like it better with the tape. It doesn't pull loose and leave brown on the bottom of your card. So I'm going to use score ta scoring tape or um, tearing tape, as Stampin' Up! likes to call it. And I'm going to put tape on this one and this one. So the very top part of your score. I'm going to try to get away with just doing one piece. I think we can. This stuff is super strong. And another piece right here. And now we're going to fold that in half. And we want to lay it in about a quarter of an inch from this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, take your pick, and we're going to lift up that backer and pull it off. And we are going to set that in. Something like that. And now we can take our backer off of this piece. And fold that back down flat and then just fold our card onto it. And there is our second piece in. And see what I mean about the glue left a little bit of nasty right there? It's just where the glue oozed out and the paper, the uh, brown cardstock stuck to the white. So this one is not like that. It's very, it looks very neat. So now we can set this tray up here like so. I think we're going to have to cut this off right back there. But that's okay. We can still put that in our trimmer and cut it off. The reason I didn't take in consideration of this coming out past this when I fold it. See, when I fold it down, it's showing that little bit. So if yours does that, don't worry about it. Just take, you can do one of two things. You can take your long scissors and cut this off. I'm sorry, cut this end off. And if you do that, just snip through all those layers. These are very strong scissors. Just like that. And now this piece is going to fit flush up. No one's going to see that because we're going to have that covered with the top tray. So that is going to fit right in there like that. And it's going to look gorgeous. So that's going to be our that's going to be our top our one of our trays, and then we're going to have another one. Now, see that's going to camouflage behind there when you close it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some more tear and tape because I like the way it looks. I'm just going to tear a piece off, and I'm going to lay it right down on that piece. And we're going to do another piece over here and just lay that down the same way, just like that. If it's overlapped, it's okay. We can double it back onto itself once we pull it off. There we go. And then we can just take and double that back onto itself. And pull this piece off, just like that. And now this piece can easily be set in, just like that, and press it all down. Now this is our first tray, very nice. Our second piece is going to work very similar as the first one. We're going to double these up. 
we're going to put some tear and tape on them and we're going to need two of these as well and we're, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to put one here in the middle and I think I think we might slide one more I don't know I think that'll work I think that'll work fine yeah just press that down so you have a good adhesion to the, to the bottom and now we're going to take our tear and tape And again, we're just going to put our tear and tape here. You know what? I think I am going to double it. I think I will double it. Let me get that up there where you can see what I'm doing. Let's open that up. I think it'll make it a little bit easier to put our tear and tape on there. I don't know. I'll go with the one because I got that one a little bit crooked. I think one to do it. It seems like it did fine on the other one. So I don't see why it won't work on this one. So like that. And then we're going to take this up. Fold this back onto itself. I like to use my take your pick for that. Just bring it back over. Let's lift our backer off of this one. And we're going to need some tape on that side too. So let's just go ahead and put a piece here. So we'll already have it on there. We won't have to worry about our tape not already being in place. Just like that. And I'm going to take my fingernail and just burnish that down really good. And we're going to fold that in half. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to lay this piece right about here. And I'm going to fold that whole piece down right there on it. And see what we have when it comes up. We're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to go ahead and put our tearing tape on everything. So let's put one piece right here. And one piece right here. And let's get one piece right on this side. And now we're ready to lift those. I'm going to give them a good varnish. And go ahead and lift up my tape. And I'm, if you notice, I'm only lifting the one on the two ends. Then we're going to fold that in two, just like that. And we're going to lay it in right about here. Fold your card down and let it come. Oh, and I put that one on the wrong side. Look at that. Ah, oh, that's not good. That is not good. Okay, let's see if we can lift that back out. Let's try it. Okay, that came up. Let's see if we can get it off of this. I did good. I got it. No problem because I have an extra one. This one, this one actually wrote on, but it's okay because if we put that side, I tell you what, let's just erase it. I wrote my sizes. I was thinking I was writing it on the, the piece that I had um, tested to see if it would work, and I didn't. But you know, this isn't going to be seen because we're going to glue on top of it, so I think we're still okay. We got a little bit of that off, so that's all that matters. So again, let's grab our tear and tape. We'll do this again. We'll get this. If you notice where these little peaks are peeking out right there, if you want to take your um, take your pick tool and just round that off, that will give the whole thing a nice little look. So that rounded that off. And now we're going to put our tape on this side. Actually, we're going to open it up. And we're going to put tape here and here. And I think here. Let's see. 
That's going to go up. That's okay here. Tape needs to go on that second one. Unless you put it in backwards, and I think that's what I did. I put it in backwards. So let's cut that off, and we are ready to install this one and this one. Okay, so now we make sure this is up. We're going to lay this in right about here, close our card down, give it a good press, and we're good to go. So now we have the area for our top tray. So we're going to take this off. And this one. And now we're ready to install our top tray. So all you want to do, you know, I meant to stamp on one of those, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get it. We're going to set that tray right about, right about here. I'm evening it up on the top side of my card. See what I'm doing? And then I'm going to press that all together. Give it a good, good press. And there is our tackle box. Is that not cute? So now what we need to do, I've got all of these little pieces that we can pop back into our box. So we have these that we can decorate. They will actually help give a little bit of dimension inside of our box and they'll fit in there just beautifully. So we can actually lay these back in. Before we do that, we're gonna need to, um, we're gonna need to do some stamping. So this is gonna, this is gonna decide what you wanna stamp where and whether you wanna do it in your white or if you wanna do it in the brown. So what I'd like to do first is, is decide exactly where I want my um, my little leers and bobbers and weights and that sort of thing because I think that's going to make it so cute. One thing I do want to do is on this one and this one, I want to stamp a little bit of emphasis using this stamp that looks like just a little bit of a, I don't know, let me give it a little bit of depth. So I'm going to grab my pecan pie and I'm going to do tone on tone. So I pick that up. And I'm going to stamp that here. And turn it around and stamp it right there. Just a little bit of emphasis on that. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, we only needed two of those, but I went ahead and stamped three. So let's grab the better ones out. And I like this one. So I'm going to put this one up here. And if you can pop it in like that, that works great. And I'm not sure. I think that looks good like that. And then we have our little lures and what have you that we're going to put in here. So I want to put, let's see, let's grab another one of those. This one didn't die cut as well as the other ones did. So we're going to put, we're going to put one of these here and maybe a little fish lure like that. I'm going to save this one because I want to use that one on the front. So I'm going to use one of these 
right here. Oops, I dropped a hook. I'm going to do a hook right here. And we're going to use one of these up here. Actually, I like this bobber better than any of them, but that's okay. We've got plenty of pieces to use. I've got another one of these little fishes. We're going to put him right there. And maybe one of these. How about a weight? These little weights are so cute. Let's do a silver weight right there. Let's do a couple of these little weights, the little round ones. If you've been fishing, you know exactly what these are used for, especially if you're um, fishing for catfish. Those work so well. I'm going to put some hooks right here. And maybe one of these right there. Let's do a hook up here. And let's do another weight right here. Everything that you add in your tackle box is going to make it all the more beautiful. I love it. I think it's this is such a cute way of doing a tackle box. I'm going to put some weights back in here. They're kind of covered up, but you can still see the edges of them. I'm going to do a bobber back there and a couple more weights. I'm just peeking out back here like that. And then you know what I got to do? I got to glue everything down. So I'm actually going to go off camera and glue all of this and pop it in. And then when we come back, we'll decorate the front and see just how cute our card's going to be once everything is said and done. And we put this little cutie on the top on our sentiment. I think it's going to be adorable. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, everyone, I'm back um, once again, and we have completed the inside of our little tackle box. Isn't that adorable? Um, I was actually looking for something that was just a plain stamp that said Happy Father's Day at the bottom. I have not found anything yet. If I don't find what I'm looking for, I'll print it out on my computer, and then I will trim it out, and I'll just stick it down here. Uh, I am hoping that I can come up with something, but nevertheless, my pieces are all in. Nothing's falling out, so we are, everything's been adhered, and this is such a cute card, but we need to do something for our front. So I got this stamp that says, good things come to those who wait. Every fisherman knows that to be a fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it right here, and I'm going to use some uh, Versafine ink, and the reason I'm choosing that, anytime I'm just doing a sentiment, this is usually my ink of choice, because it is a very vivid, black, um, beautiful ink. So I'm going to come right about here, and I'm going to stamp that down, like so. Beautiful image every time. I love this ink. Um, especially for sentiments. Now, you cannot alcohol, uh, do any alcohol marking, coloring with this. I only use it for my sentiments, and I use my memento for my, um, my other um, stamping needs whenever I'm going to color. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to take this lasting label, lovely and lasting punch, and I'm going to punch this out. And if you notice, we can't go crossways, so we're going to go long ways, and that's exactly what I was looking for when I was looking for a um, a die or a punch to work on this card with. So I'm going to get it centered in there. What looks to be centered to me cannot always be centered because I do have, sometimes I don't have an eye for it. Sometimes I do. This looks, mm, I'm going to say that right there looks pretty good. And then I'm going to give that a punch and take it out. That looks really good. 
And then I'm going to punch two of those same shapes out of a piece of the pecan pie. So I'm just going to come down to here and punch. And then I'm going to come right about there and punch. And that gave me two of those pieces that I was looking for. Now what I want to do is I want to cross these over right about there. So I'm going to use some Stampin' Seal. You can use liquid glue, but I just want a little piece of Stampin' Seal just to hold these together. And what I want to do is make sure that that little round point right there and the top one kind of line up, something like that. And then I'm going to take some uh, Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm going to pop that up. So let me grab my Dimensionals. Let's see, we have some right there. So we're going to take these and I'm going to put probably about four or five on this piece because I want to make sure that everything is secure. And I think if I put one on each corner and maybe one in the middle. I think that will work. So I am going to grab my take your pick tool again. Love this tool. And I'm just going to pick the backers off of these dimensionals. Just like that. And then I'm going to put this down just like this. And what I'm going to do is see that little rounded area right there? And that's where I want to center my piece onto. That way I can pr rest pretty fair that this is where I want it. And then I'm going to put that layer right about there. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that side and I think that's going to be all we're going to need. A little bit right here on the tail and a little bit right there. And then we can set this down so that he's like hanging on Right about like that. And then that cute. Love that. Oh, I'm going to take your pick. Rolled off. I'm sure it probably hit. No, I thought maybe it might have hit Toby in the head, but guess what? Toby wasn't in his bed. <laughs> Usually he's under my desk. He has a little bed uh, pulled out right up underneath my desk. And a lot of times he's sitting right there. So we're going to center that about like so. And I'm going to also pop this up on dimensionals because I think it'll look beautiful. And I'm just going to put one here, one here, one right there. And then let's get one here and one here. Again, that's like the five that we put on the front. And this is going to work just as good for the back. And this card will be done as soon as we get this glued on. So you can see by just doing something so simple. You know what? I may want to put some ribbon. What would be some pretty ribbon that would be very masculine? What about this pecan pie? This is so pretty. Look at this. It's a brand new roll. I just got it in. And I There it went. And let's see what a piece of this would look like. Just a little piece going across our card like that. And this sitting on top of it. I would definitely add a little interest, don't you think? I'm not sure which one I'm going to like the best. Let's try it. Let's see what this one looks like. Um, this was equally as pretty. This came with the... Um, the earthened, um, I haven't worked with that bundle yet, but it's so pretty. Um, I may have to do something with that very quickly because it's so, so pretty. Maybe I'll try something for my Tuesday video with that. Um, leave, me in, um, leave me something in the comment and tell me if you would like me to do something with that. Oh, that looks like rope. That would be so pretty. I think I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to do a piece about this long, and I'm going to take and loop it 
sort of like this. And put that down about like that. And then let's see how this will look over top of it. Nope, that's not working. I really want it to pull through. Um, let's try this. Let's pull it like that and like that. That looks almost like the fish emblem. And then let's see. I'm going to use a glue dot to adhere that down right there. So let's grab our glue dot. And again, I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool because this works so well when you're putting down ribbon. And I'm going to lay it right about here. And see, that just holds that in place until we can get our sentiment over it. And that is going to add so much interest to the front of this card. I love it. I'm going to press that down. And there is our ribbon. Looks like it might be some rope. And everybody knows they need rope when they're out fishing. You never know when you're going to get something tangled up or you need to move your boat. So many different things that we can use that for. And I didn't end up using this, which is equally pretty, but I love that. I think it gives it just what I was looking for. So let me know in the comment, what do you think about this little creation of mine? I thought it turned out super cute, and I, I still want to look for something right here that will say Happy Father's Day or... You know, I love this one that says Happy Retirement. Good things come to those who wait. You know what? I'm going to do this as a retirement card because my husband is retiring in January. I know it's a while until January, but good things come to those who wait and waiting for fishing and Happy Retirement. I am so going to do that, and I'm going to... I'm going to do that in pumpkin pie. I think he will really appreciate this card. He is a fisherman at heart, and I think this will be the perfect uh, card for him. So I'm going to load that up and ink it. And then I'm going to come up under here as best I can. We're going to try to get this nice and straight right at the bottom. Happy retirement. How cute is that? I love the way this card turned out. I wasn't going with a retirement card, but then the more that I've started putting this together, the more I thought that my husband would really enjoy this. And uh, I think I think he will. I think he's going to love this card. I may throw a couple of more little lures or something up in there. Uh, I may even stamp a fish or something and put it on both sides of the happy retirement. But I love it. I think it's so cute. And I, th I hope that he will. And please leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this. I think it's simply adorable. And I couldn't have made it without this beautiful, beautiful stamp and die set. What did I do with my dies? <laughs> Y'all know I got them here somewhere because I just I just used them. Um, here they are. Here is the set that I used. And like I said, this set is brand new in our annual catalog. Go take a peek. If you got a man that loves to fish in your life, then I can assure you he will love this set. And you can make him a tackle box. Or you can make a card that looks like a tackle box on the outside and put a sentiment on it. I'll be doing more with this. I will come back and do a Happy Father's Day card with this because I think you will get some beautiful ideas on how to lay this out and how beautiful it will be. So God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you say and do bring glory to our Savior. Jesus came to this earth to save the world. And he did that just that. But we have to reach out and... Uh, accept the gift that he gave so freely. God bless and keep you as always. I love you guys. And until next time, God bless. Bye-bye.